Before we get ready to start, I'm Naila. I'm the president of the Friends of the Macon Library. We've been doing we've been doing this show for like five years in front of Macon Library, but with COVID, unfortunately, we couldn't put down the block this year. So Daryl, who runs this community park, said, "Why don't we do it here?" And is for everybody in the community and it's free every single day of the year. So bring your kids, have lunch here, just hang out here. So, we're getting ready to start. Are you guys ready? Yeah! You guys have your candy? Yeah! All right. So here comes the... Look at my phone, I'm so tired, y'all. <laughs> it's the Scout Master album. He's going to shut it down for you. Public Library and Friends of the Library proudly present Masquerade on Make On, scary stories to tell at Camp Deadwood, based on the books written by Alvin Schwartz and illustrated by Stephen Gamble. Good evening, campers. I said good evening, campers. Good evening. And that's more like it. I, of course, am your camp director, Alvin. Tonight, we're going to do something very exciting. Oh man, we'll show trick or treating. Yeah, trick or treating in Best Eye is the best. And we are here, stuck in the forest. Now, now, kids. You can find just as much horror right here in the Adirondack Mountains, especially here at Camp Deadwood. See, tonight, I'm gonna tell you scary stories the scariest stories I know, and some of you campers are going to help me like we talked about before. Alright. Um, I don't know. Sounds kind of scary to me. That's the point. Yeah. Who ordered the chicken? Hey, I had a chicken. <laughs> Alright kids, knock it off. See, ever since you used to create fire, they gather around it to come together and share scary stories. Then, they'd see who could scare each other the most. Often, these stories have been passed down for hundreds of years. Tonight, we share in that great tradition. See? It's fun to be scared. It is? Definitely. And this is a perfect place for it. Just a thing. In the dark, it's easy to imagine all sorts of strange and spooky things. Well, let's get this started. Let me get my back. Every storyteller needs one of these. <laughs> nice. You guys have yours? Now, where was I? The big toe. A boy was digging at the edge of the garden like this one when he saw a big toe. He tried to pick it up, but it was stuck on something. So he gave it a good hard jerk and it came off in his hand. Then he heard... <gasps> the boy took the toe into the kitchen and showed it to his mother. Oh, this looks nice and plump. I'll put it in the soup and we'll have it for supper. That night, his father carved the toe into three pieces and they each had a piece. Then they did the dishes and when it got dark, they went to bed. The boy fell asleep almost at once, but in the middle of the night, a sound awakened him. It was something out in the street. Where is my toe? When the boy heard that, he got very scared. But he thought, he doesn't know where I am. He will never find me. Then, he heard the voice once more. It was closer. Where? Oh. The boy pulled the blanket over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it will be gone. But soon he heard. Where is my toe? Closer and closer came the footsteps. Now they were outside his door. Yeah. 
Where is my toe? Shaking with fear, he listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark toward his bed. Then they stopped. Where is my toe? You got it! Strange happenings scare us too. We hear all about insects that make their nests in a person's body or a nightmare that comes true, and we shudder. If such things really do happen, then they can happen to us. This next story is called The Red Spot. While Ruth slept, a spider crawled across her face. It stopped for several minutes on her left cheek, and then went on its way. The next morning, Ruth asked her mother, Mom, what is that red spot on my cheek? Hmm, it looks like a spider bite. It'll go away. Just a few scratches. Soon, the small red spot grew into a small red boil. Look at it now, Mom. It's, it's getting bigger. It's sore. That sometimes happens. It's coming to a head. In a few days, the boil was even larger. Look at it now. It, it hurts and it's ugly. We'll have a doctor look at it. Maybe it's infected. But the doctor could not see Ruth until the next day. That night, Ruth took a shower. As she soaked herself, the boil burst. <laughs> Out came the swarm of tiny spiders. A spider had laid eggs in Ruth's cheek. Ew. That will never happen. How you know? All right, settle down. It's getting late. Time for just one more story. This one is called Harold. When it got hot in the valley, Thomas and Alfred drove their cows up to the cool green pasture in the mountains to graze. Usually, they stayed there with the cows for two months. Then, they brought them down from Deadwood Hill to the valley again. The work is easy enough, but so bore- Wait a minute. Does it really say Deadwood Hill? Deadwood like, Hill. Camp Deadwood? Wow, Mr. Alvin. Is that a true story? No, it's just an old story. Then, Thomas had an idea that changed everything. Let's make a doll the size of a man, he said. It would be fun to make, and we could put it in the garden to scare away the birds. They made the doll out of old sacks stuffed with straw. They gave it a pink nose and tiny eyes. Then they added dark hair and a twisted brown. They named it Harold. Sounds like a scarecrow. Exactly. Each morning on their way to the pasture, they tied Harold to a pole in the garden to scare away the birds. Each night, they brought him inside. When they were feeling playful, they talked to him. How are the vegetables growing today, Harold? Whenever something went wrong, they took it out on Harold. They would yell at him or make fun of him. You dumb doll! You're not good for anything. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> One night, after Thomas had been teasing the doll, Harold grunted. <clears throat> Did you hear that? It was Harold. I was watching him when it happened. I couldn't believe it. But he's just a sack of straw. It's not possible. They were still scared. They decided to keep a close eye on him until they moved the cows down, and then they just leave him behind. One night... Alfred noticed something that frightened him. Harold is growing. Freaky. They thought maybe it was just their imagination. But the next morning, while they were eating, Harold stood up and walked out of the hut. Look! Mr. Alvin! Kids, I'm telling a story. He climbed up on the roof and tried back and forth like a horse on its hind legs. Um, Mr. Alvin? Come on, guys, I'm just getting to the good part. 
the men had no idea that he might be next to this story of Gordon. Then, they decided to take the cows down from Deathwood Hill that day. They were so relieved, they started laughing and singing. But when they had gone only a mile or two, they realized they had forgotten to bring the milking stores. Neither one of them wanted to go back, but the spirit cost a lot to replace. They drew straws to see which one would go back. It was Thomas. I'll catch up with you. Alfred walked on toward the valley. When Alfred came to a rise in the path, he looked back for Thomas. He did not see him anywhere. But he did see Harold. Kids, I told you. Mr. Alfred, look behind you. No. Got you. We pull this prank every year, kids, and it always works. Who is that? It's Stevie. Say hi, Stevie. Um, Mr. Alvin? I'm over here. Stevie? I know you wanted me to wear the costume, but when I went to get it, it wasn't there. I figured you gave it to somebody else. Uh, hey there. You, you sort of scared us. Um... What's your name? <laughs> What's your name, Camper? Harold. Don't worry, kids. There's nothing to be scared of. What's <laughs> 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 Alvin really doing? I don't know. They didn't cover this in the handbook. Thank you, all of you. It's because of you that I live again. Huh? What does that mean? Your fear. It fuels me, gives me strength. The more stories you told, the more frightened you got. The more I came alive. I've been asleep, oh, so many years. Gee, Harold, we're awfully sorry to wake you up. You can go back to bed now. Don't you want to know how the story ends, kids? Yes, sir, I'm responsible for these kids, and they really ought to get to sleep. Finish the story. You see, it's just that... Finish it! Uh, he did not see him anywhere, but he did see Harold. The doll was on the roof of the hut again. As Alfred watched, Harold kneeled and stretched... Finish it! ...and stretched out of bloody skin. In to dry in the sun. Ew! <laughs> okay, um, Harold, sir, you had your fun. The fun is just beginning. <laughs> Stop! Bravery is showing courage and valor in the face of fear. To be a warrior in your own right, to never give up the good fight. Oh? Huh? That's our camp motto, right, Mr. Alvin? That's right. Bravery is showing courage and valor in the face of fear. To be a warrior in your own right. To never give up the good fight. To be a warrior in your own right. To never give up the good fight. To be a warrior in your own right. To never give up the good fight. Did you write that? <laughs> I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> now, friends, we've come to the end of the story. Thanks for joining me around the fire. Be safe and beware. Yeah.